Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to your video on solving a system of linear inequalities. So as you are going through, we are going to still be solving our system of equations, two, three variables, but we're going to be graphing each one of these and seeing where on the graph each one of our intersections actually comes across. You will see the agenda on the board um, that goes along with each one of your homework assignments. So on the bottom, you can start your homework assignment. If you so choose, you will get class time on Monday to finish that homework assignment if needed. So please take notes as you're going through today. Here are each of the steps for your graphing linear inequalities. The first step is to change your inequality to an equal sign so that we can actually graph. We're going to be using that inequality sign, but we're going to come back to that when we actually look at our step number three. So the second step is then we actually want to graph our lines. We have y equals mx plus b that we know, or slope-intercept form, on how to graph actually any line that has an x to the first power in it, a linear term. We need to use a dashed line when we're dealing with any greater than or less than symbols, and a solid line when we are using a less than or equal to or a greater than or equal to. So again, this is key. This is one thing that it may not seem like a big deal, but our graphs will change and our answers will change based on what kind of dotted or dashed solid lines that you use. And then we're going to do some test points to see what points actually make the inequalities true. Let's get our first example here. You'll notice that we just have one inequality. Y is greater than 3. And the first thing you need to think about is what type of line actually is this? So for our step number one, technically this is a y equals 3 line. So we know that a y equals 3 line is actually a horizontal line. I'll learn to you from your Algebra 1 days. So let's graph that line. As we're going through the second part here, we know that this is going to be a dashed line because we are dealing with something that does not have an equal to it. So we keep that there. It's not going to be solid. So let's actually make that graph. So we go to a 3 on our y-axis, and we need a dashed line that is horizontal all the way through. We make our arrows so we know, we know that line will continue if we had to. Now the key is we need to think about what shading we have. So now we need a y value that is bigger than 3. So figure out a point that would have a y value bigger than 3. Any point that has a y bigger than 3. I could pick the point 4 and 10. That y value is bigger than 3. So if I'm on my graph, I would do 4, 10. It would be somewhere up in this direction, which means this is the part that has to be shaded because these are all of the points that would make this inequality true. Okay? As long as I can tell about where your shading is, I'm not too picky about it. That is a complete graphing inequalities problem. Next one. Now you have something that's a little bit different because of the form and how it's written. You have an x minus y that is greater than 1. So the first thing we need to do is write this with an equal sign. And then hopefully you notice that we'll, well, we actually need to figure out what this equation is. So this equation, if we subtract an x over to get the y by itself, we want to make it look like slope-intercept form. We divide by a 1 in every spot. We have a y, in this case, that is equal to an x minus 1. Now, one thing you will notice here, and this is a big, 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 big point. We divided by a negative 1. We divided every term by a negative 1. So what does that do to the sign? It switches that sign's location. So when we go to our next step, we have the equation. We need to write this now as a y equals and our sign changed. So we now have a less than x minus 1. So we're going to have a dashed line as we're looking through this. So let's actually graph this point with all of our other points. That make up the line, we have a negative 1. We know that our slope is going to go up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1. If we keep going up 1, over 1, we can just start writing in that dashed line all the way through. And I would extend it all the way to both sides of your graph. 
because when we're shading, it's going to include all the points that are actually on this graph. So we need to pick a point here. Usually the easiest point to pick is a zero, zero. So if we put that in place of the y and that in place of the x, is zero less than zero minus one? So is zero less than negative one? Well, you're looking at that and you're saying, oh, that doesn't work out. Zero is not less than negative one, it's actually bigger than that. That means the point zero, zero is not on your graph, which means everything underneath that line is going to be what your answer actually ends up being. Okay, so we could continue to switch this. We could kind of do any type of problem we want. You'll notice here, there's an x that is less than a, or equal to a 4. So again, really just one difference here. You have an x equal to 4 is what you're actually graphing. So for step number two is we need to figure out what type of line we have. Since we have an equal to, this is a solid, thick line that we can actually put that in. So where is 4 on your x-axis? We go straight up from that spot. We go straight down from that spot, and we have our vertical line as we're dealing the exact opposite of when we had our y equals, which is the regular number. And again, we can pick a 0, 0 and plug that point in. So x less than or equal to a 4. If we plug the 0, 0 in, and we put 0 in place of x, is 0 less than or equal to 4? And you'll say, well, Sure is. So we have all of this stuff that is actually graphed on this side of the equation. So we're testing points and graphing for each one of those problems. Ready? So as you're looking through here, please note that when you get to other questions, your goal is to get the y all by itself for your slope-intercept form. Now we're going to get into some system of inequality. So as you're looking at this system of inequality, we are going to be graphing more than one inequality at a time. So the key here, as you're looking at the definition on the top, the solution set is all the points that make every inequality in the system true. So we're going to have multiple lines on this graph, some shaded, some solid, and we're going to have to figure out where each of the middle points, the solution sets, the ones that make them true, actually intersect one another. So as we're looking through this, Let's do each individual, let's graph each individual one. So I'll do the first equation in red. So as you're looking at that, we know that that is the same thing as an x equal to a one. We know it's a vertical line, the last equation that we did, or last inequality that we did. We know that in this case, there's no equal to, so it's going to be a dashed line as you're looking through the problem. So that's the very first thing we can graph x equals to 1 with a dashed line all the way on the x, and we have our first inequality graph. Now, as you're looking at this, we want to figure out what points are going to make this true. So if we now go through, and if we're going to still pick that same point of a 0, 0, it is 0 greater than 1. So hopefully, as you're looking at that, you're saying, no, it's definitely not. So that means 0, 0 is not the side we have graphed. We graph the right-hand side as we're going through. Okay. Now we need to do the exact same thing, but with the second inequality. So I'm going to do that one in blue over here. So we have our number 2 of a y equals a 2. Now we know this is going to be our horizontal line as we go through. And this one now is going to be a little bit different because we're going to have a solid line. So as we're graphing a y equals 2, Go two on our y-axis, all the way to the right and all the way to the left. Solid line. We need to now figure out plugging any point in here is zero greater than two. So as you're looking at that, you're saying, well, no, it's not. So technically, what we're going to be doing is sorry, zero is not greater. I'm sorry to draft the wrong spot there. So as we're looking through, we're graphing everything above the line. So the key here is we're trying to find where the intersection is. You'll notice there's a lot of reds, there's a lot of blues on here. But this upper spot does not have any red with it, so we have to get rid of that. This lower spot doesn't have any blue with it whatsoever. So the only spot that they actually share that they have in common 
is going to be the part in the upper right hand corner. That's what they share. That is the solution set for this particular inequality. Okay. A few more examples that are going to be a little bit more difficult. So the goal here with the first inequality is we're going to try to figure out in this case what type of solution we have, what type of line we have, and then in addition to that, also figure out the shading. So we know that our first slope is going to be a negative one. We're going to have a y-intercept of a negative two. We know that this is going to be a dashed line, not a solid line. So let's graph those pieces. You have your y-intercept of a negative two. You're going to go down one, one to the right, down one, one to the right. You can keep doing this all the way throughout if you want, or you can go a little bit different. And you can just put the dashes in the middle however you want, but we know it has to be a dashed line. And as we're looking at this, this is where we need to plug some other values in. So when we plug those other values in, we need to see where your solution set actually is. So in this case, let's plug a zero in. We have a zero that is going to be greater than a negative zero minus two. Or in this case, is zero greater than negative two? Imagine we have that problem. That is true. So in essence, we're graphing everything on this side of the inequality. Okay. Second inequality now, number two. We're going to have to get this y by itself. So we have a y that's less than or equal to a negative x minus 4. So we got the y all by itself. We're going to find our slope, which is a negative 1. We're going to find our v, which is a 0, negative 4. And this is going to be a solid line because we have an equal to underneath it. Let's graph that now. We have a negative 4 in this spot. We still go down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1 to each one of these spots, down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1. We're going to have a solid line so we can actually connect each one of these. And you notice that this is already going to be a little bit different type of example because these two lines are parallel to one another. So when we do our testing now, we can actually test and say, is 0 less than or equal to a negative 0 minus 4? Is 0 less than or equal to negative 4? And as you look at that, you think, is 0 less than or equal to negative 4? Well, no, that's not the case. So we can't shade on the 0, 0 side. So, so we would shade on the bottom of that or underneath it. Well, where's the overlap? Where's the solution set for this example? It's no solution. We don't have solution set to this whatsoever because there is no overlap. Okay. The only way that we can make this one more difficult is, yep, you got this by adding more to it. That's the fun part. Okay. As you're going through this, I want you to stop the video right now, go through, see how you can graph as you're going through, and see if you wind up with the correct equation for this. Okay. Pause the video. If you're done with it, you can resume the video. All right, now as you're going through, hopefully you're checking your answers now. So as you're checking, you have one, two, three, four, five here, up to over one. So you are going to have a nice thick line for everything here. It will be very important that you are pretty exact with your lines as you're making them. You now have a one as your line except for the second equation. I will do a different color for this one. So the first one I did in blue. The second one I will do in green. So we have a positive 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, we go down 2 over 1, we keep doing this, make sure we get a nice exact, but again, we're going to have, as you're looking through, a nice solid thick line for that spot. Okay, we'll graph the red one next, and now all of a sudden we have a positive 5, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so that's the same y-intercept, but your slope is the exact opposite of one another. So you have down 2, now it's one to the right, down to one to the right, down to one to the right. And again, it's going to be a thick line as you're going through. Hopefully you can maybe see where this intersection is kind of shaping up, where your solution set is shaping up. It's going to be where all of these intersect one another. So if we pick the same y-intercept, we go down two over one, down two over one, down two over one. We can keep going through this. And all of these points actually join up. Make like this little diamond or you know, you could call it a rhombus shape. So if you tested all the values, hopefully you found that the intersection of all of these, the solution set, is identical.
And, and last, but most certainly not least, you could be given a question that actually gives you the graph. And you need to figure out what the inequalities were that were associated with each one of these. So as you're going through here, you can pick any inequality that you want. I would like to start with the one that I think is easy. I'm going to pick this vertical line that is on the right hand side first. So the vertical line is going to be my equation number one. So we know that it's a vertical line. That means it has to be an x in some way, shape, or form. I look at where the x-intercept is, one, two, three, four. I see a, a five. So I know that in some way, shape, or form, I'm going to have an x. I'm going to have a five. I need to figure out what inequality sign goes with that five. Since it is graphed inside or to the left, that means that the five has to be the bigger one. It's a solid line. So we have a greater than or sorry, less than these are equal to for that part for equation number one. Now let's start with our next easiest equation, which I would say would be our horizontal line here. We know that the horizontal line is going to be y, and we go with the y intercept of one, two, three, four, five, six. Now everything is graphed underneath this particular spot. So underneath the spot means that, well, in this case, the x had to be bigger as well. So less than, open up to the 6, and we have our equal to in that spot as well. So we've taken 2 out of the equation. You'll notice here that the shading happens to stop at this spot. So that has to be an equation for us in some way, shape, or form as well. That equation has to be, well, another vertical line. So we have an x with a 0. The shading is on the right side, so it has to be all the numbers that are bigger than zero. So we're going to have an x that's greater than or equal to that zero. So we've taken three of the inequalities already, and you know what? We only have a few left. The few that we have left, the lines that we have not touched yet, are the actual diagonal lines. So for number four, I'm going to try to pick this one right here that happens to have a negative slope. So for number four, we need to work backwards, and we need to figure out what the slope and the y-intercept are. We know that the y-intercept is a 3, and it's a positive 3. So we need to figure out what the slope of this actually is. So now since we can take this point, that's a y-intercept, take the x-intercept, and calculate slope. Now 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we went down 3 to the right 4. That means we have a negative 3 fourths x. Since 0, 0, if we plug that in, would not be a solution whatsoever, that means we're going to have a greater than or equal to with our actual inequality. And the last equation that we have here, the very last one, is our other diagonal line. So we have a five inequality graph here, which you could do. We're just looking backwards to find this last one. So we need to figure out what in the world, well, we know it's a y that we're going to start with. We need to figure out what that y-intercept is. And if we continue this trend of going, in this case, down 1, 2, and over 1, so if we continue with the slope of a negative 2x all the way to the bottom, excuse me, positive 2x, because the graph is actually going up and to the right, we could continue that all the way down, and we would come across a y-intercept. And to finish the problem, 0, 0, you plug that in, does not work. You have another greater than or equal to with your particular. All right, again, feel free to start on your homework. You can go back to the very end and write down. I hope you have a great rest of your day.